The MR73 Menuron revolvers used to be made in a place called Mulhouse, France, and in about 1997 or 1998, the factory, the tooling, and all of the production was purchased by Chapuis, where they are now manufactured. And uh, as of about two years ago, Chapuis has been purchased by the Beretta Group. And so I figured it's high time that we go take a look at Chapuis and see how the MR73s are actually manufactured. So let's have a, have a look, see, shall we? Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I am here today at Chapuis Arm by the generous invitation of the Directeur General, Vincent Chapuis. Uh, you've been running Chapuis for many, many years, haven't you? Yeah, th first, thank you for coming. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you here uh, today. Uh, well, Chapuis is a it's kind of a long story. Uh, it's a family business. My grandfather studied the business uh, was uh, in the mid thirties. Okay. Uh, well, then uh, my uh, father uh, came uh, with him. Uh, well, in the, the late fifties, early sixties, uh, and we joined. The, uh, so we've been in this uh, environment f forever. Uh, well, uh, we came together with my brother uh, and joined the company uh, early nineties. Okay. So we've been here for for at least uh, more or less uh, thirty years now. Impressive. There are not that many gun <laughs> manufacturers in France anymore, are there? No. Uh, well, uh, there's another company down in Saint Etienne, which is called uh, Vernet Caron, mm -hmm. but uh, they are mainly involved with uh, long guns. Okay. And you do both high-end shotguns and sporting rifles, yeah. double rifles, as well as there's a straight pole design there. Correct. But I think today, most people, at least most people in the United States, are going to recognize you for the MR73 revolvers. Yeah. Great. So, yeah, we got with the, with the Manuram revolvers years ago. Uh, we... Uh, we moved the factory uh, from Mulhouse down to to somebody in here uh, in the late 80s, uh, 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 90s, sorry, uh, 97, 98. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been uh, manufacturing uh, those guns uh, since uh, since then. So uh, okay. it's uh, more than 20 years now. Now, I have heard rumors that there is a lot of high-tech manufacturing going into these guns today. A lot of CNC? <laughs> yeah, well, we are going to tour the factory uh, just next, so you will be able to to see exactly in detail uh, how the manufacturing of the guns are all done and completed, and uh, you will see it's not only uh, hand fitting, uh, there's a lot of uh, hard work behind. I expect so. So yes, right behind those doors is an actual revolver factory, well, a firearms factory. <laughs> so um, enough of this, let's go look. <laughs> Allons-y. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right, so we are in the actual production floor here in Chapuis, and we're going to go through the process of actually manufacturing an MR73 revolver. So we start with a raw forging. They actually have the entire revolver frame done as a forging. These are done in a forging shop. The factory here isn't set up to actually do forging. This is a smaller scale CNC machining facility. So you start with a raw forging, and then that is going to go through several iterations of CNC machining. This is the very rough uh, cuts to take this and turn it into what begins to become an actual finished revolver frame. Uh, all of the MR73s have the same frame, so they all start with the same forging. The differences between the Sport, the Match, and the Gendarmerie models are essentially, well, in the frame, the difference is only in the rear sight. So there are a few different machining cuts that are made depending on which pattern the gun's going to become up here. But as far as the lock work, the cylinder, the grip, all of that is identical across all the different patterns of MR73. So if we head to one of the actual CNC machines, What they have done is, perhaps the best way to describe this would be to compare it to a progressive reloading press, where there is a tombstone here, 
that holds multiple frames at the same time, and they go through and uh, each, each set of fixtures here, the machine is performing a different set of cuts depending on what's accessible. So when you're looking at the right side of the frame, when you're looking at the right side of the frame here, the cuts on the right side can be made. When you're looking at the left side below, you can make cuts on the left side of the frame. So uh, frames are put in for each of these positions. When this tombstone runs through the machine, the machine performs a different set of cuts on each of the frames. Once it's completed all of them, the operator is then going to unbolt the frames, move them through, again, kind of like a progressive reloading press, so that each frame will eventually have all of the machining cuts made. You can see we also have the drilling operations being done here, and I'm not sure exactly which uh, set of fixtures it is, but you can see that the, uh, in particular, the hole for the barrel uh, has been drilled on this bottom one, but not yet threaded. And then we've also got holes for the cylinder axis being cut uh, and so on. So uh, a very efficient use of a single machine to do a lot of these operations. So once these processes are all done, we've gone from our raw forging to a largely completed frame here. All the, the precision cuts are made for the fire control group. Instead of this being just a general uh, raw rough opening, we have the hole for the barrel is now threaded and ready to accept a barrel. And then these are set up for adjustable sites, uh, either a match or a sport model. Now, we're getting a little more high tech. So the machinery for the frame is CNC, but it's kind of older CNC, where you actually have tombstones and you're having to reposition items in jigs. When we get to parts like the barrel and the cylinder, things get more high tech. So the cylinders begin as bar stock, and initially they are cut to length, like so, and center drilled for positioning. Then we move over here. The beginning of the ejector is cut. And when this goes into the machine to become a cylinder, the CNC machine, the, cil the extractor is actually put into the machine like this with the cylinder. And so when the chambers are cut, the chambers are being cut on the extractor and on the cylinder simultaneously to ensure a perfect match between the two. And once, let's see. So once the, uh, the cylinders are cut, like so, the cylinder is going to come out of the machine with all of these profiles cut. This is a five axis machine. The ejector will stay mated to the cylinder for the lifespan of the gun. So uh, these are, you could say it's the next evolution beyond hand fitted. Because these parts are actually being cut simultaneously, they're a perfect fit. And so they stay together. Now, there are internal cuts here that are done on the cylinder after the, the extractor is removed, but the initial uh, profile for the, each individual chamber, these parts are cut simultaneously. I can't really show you very much through the, uh, through the door on the machine here because it is currently running someone's revolver cylinder, but we'll see if we can come back at the end of the cycle uh, and get a view inside the machine there. So the hammers also start as rough forgings. Actually, I wouldn't even call this a rough forging. This is a very nice forging. If we take a look at these up close, this is the original forging, and you can see some of the rough finish there from the, the forging process. And then that is machined into a finished hammer with a number of processes on another CNC machine. Um, this will eventually become another five axis CNC automatic feed process. Uh, but for now, they're still being made from forgings. So with every new batch of parts, critical dimensions are actually checked for perfection, essentially. Uh, right now, this is actually a rifle receiver. Chapuis also makes a line of high-end hunting rifles, uh, but the same thing is done with the MR73 parts. So in this case, we have a top-of-the-line inspection, modern, modern inspection machine, machine, as you can see, connected up to uh, CAD CAM software, but there is also some of the older classical inspection uh, machinery, like we have here, 
and even an optical comparator for uh, curved parts. Pretty cool. So nothing comes out of the CNC on a part this complex that's quite perfect and usable. So there is a hand fitting process here of getting the inside shape of the cylinder area just right. There are some parts that are hammered into place on the inside that can leave little deformities on the outside of the frame. So the cylinder, the cylinder arbor are all touched up by hand to fit just exactly perfectly. Rounding out the angles. And this is what makes an MR73 different from your typical run-of-the-mill Colt or Smith & Wesson. So when the revolver frame goes into the polishing machine, it's going to start in this condition, and you can see that there are still machining marks on there. Uh, so this goes in, and then there is a two-hour rough polish, which results in this, which frankly is better than most production revolvers, but that's not actually the end of the process. There is then an additional two hours of finish polishing, which gets you to this. And that is what allows these guns to have the magnificent mirror blue finish that they end up with. So one thing that's worth pointing out here is the, the frames are blued when they come into this point for assembly, but the cylinders are not. And the reason for that is the assembly process and fitting of the trigger in particular and adjustment of the trigger requires an awful lot of dry firing. And in order to avoid having uh, guns go out the door with a ring around the cylinders, all of that fitting is done first, then the cylinders are blued at the very end so that when they get to the customer, they're still immaculate. Since this is in Europe, of course, every one of the guns produced here at Chapuis has to be proof tested, uh, and so there is a shooting gallery essentially down in the basement. If you follow me in. We have a shooting setup for both long guns and for handguns, because they make both here. Uh, for the revolvers, every cylinder has to be proofed, or every chamber has to be proofed. So a total of six rounds, six proof rounds through each revolver. You've got a fancy armored setup for the rifles, because some of them are extremely high pressure. The revolvers, they've been doing this 20 years, they've never had anything fail proof test in any way, and so it is simply handheld right through here into a bullet trap. So there's a fume extractor, the bullet trap itself right there, and this whole assembly can is on wheels and can slide back and forth for either rifles or handguns, and apparently the occasional, oops, I forgot to move the bullet trap, but. <laughs> but every MR73 is of course proof tested to CIP standards and this is where they do it.
So every one of the revolvers is test fired, both for function and to set the sights. This gentleman's job is, in fact, shooting all day. Function ejects nicely. And on to the next gun. Notice, as I mentioned earlier, all of the cylinders are still in the white. These guns will be zeroed and proofed uh, before the cylinders are actually blued to avoid getting any excess hammer marks or uh, wear marks on the cylinders. So when these were made in Mulhaus, it was a lot of individual labor hand fitting. Mm -hmm. and old-style machines, a lot of manual machines, I think. Yeah, uh, well, the, 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 concept, um, the design of the gun itself has pretty much be, uh, stays the same. Mm -hmm. um, well, the engineering of the revolvers, uh, nothing has really been changed, but what has been changed compared to uh, the, the production from before is the way that uh, we manufacture the parts. Uh, obviously, uh, now in 2021, and the production uh, tooling, the, the machinery are way different than what it was uh, uh, in the 80s. Uh, and yes. uh, well, that has been really made a, a significant change. Five axis automatic feed CNC machines are extremely cool to see in action. And it's really neat how uh, a design like this can benefit from. Mm -hmm the style of very, very modern manufacturing, uh, but still coupled with the hand fitting and the individual care that goes into each gun. Correct, it's because at the end, this is what makes the difference. Uh, it's uh, still need, although we use uh, the up-to-date uh, machinery, uh, we still need to, to have a, a little bit of hand fitting, and uh, this is what it's gonna make a big difference between a, a fitted gun and um, a mass production uh, gun. Right. So what is the, the capacity um, of revolvers? How many can you make? Yeah, altogether, uh, we're running uh, somewhere around 3,000 a year for, for now. Okay. So that's an entire factory setup, like you saw, doing about 10 revolvers per day on average, which I think speaks to the amount of hand fitting and individual labor that goes into each gun. It's, it's a very impressive setup they have here. Uh, and you have a variety of different patterns. I know in the United States right now, we have the four inch, uh, 100 millimeter, yep. and the five and a quarter inch, which I think is Correct. up 130. Correct. But you also have longer barrels, right? Yeah, we just came out with this new design, uh, back to, to the old years. And uh, this was the, the eight inch uh, used uh, years ago uh, by the JGN. I'm very excited about those. <laughs> you will get it soon. Excellent. When those come to the United States, I am definitely getting myself one of them. <laughs>
So, oh, thank you very much for the access. Uh, a lot of gun companies are very paranoid about showing their process, and it's fantastic to be able to see everything that's being done and provide it to uh, to you guys, the viewers. So, merci beaucoup. <laughs> merci d'être venu, and uh, thank you for spending that time with us. Twist my arm. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and enjoyed the look at uh, what goes into modern, top-of-the-line revolver manufacture today. Thanks for watching.